Hey everyone, hello again. Uh, I want to show you something that I added to the Phoenix Nightlist a few days back. So uh, this time I'm going to talk about PRT cache files. So first let me show you the uh, Phoenix version that I'm using. It's a Nightly from the 23rd of June. It's Nightly 30856. So until now, uh, Phoenix had the Phoenix PRT reader. So uh, PRT files are the file format from Krakatoa. So the PRT reader could just browse to such file sequences and uh, you can see uh, some preview in the viewport and it doesn't have a lot of options. So you, for example, you can plug it into a particle shader like this and render it out. Uh, just let me switch to V-Ray. All right, I'm going to, to add a dome white like this and And here we go. So the my white is, is pretty strong, but you can see here in the alpha the result. So uh, the PRT reader was very limited. It had uh, very few options. So you didn't have much control about uh, over what uh, is going on. So right now the new thing is that you can load PRT files directly into the Phoenix simulator. So if I create uh, any kind of simulator, it could be a fire simulator, a liquid simulator, doesn't matter. So if I browse for the caches right here from the input rollout, and here they are. So uh, until now, we could pick the Phoenix over caches, the future D files or the VDBs. And now here's the option for uh, Krakatoa PRT files as well. So. Here's the cache sequence, and uh, this has uh, a lot of uh, a lot of pros over the uh, the PRT reader. So, for example, first off, you can check what's going on in the cache right here in the cache file content box in, under the simulation rollout. So you can see that uh, here we have the PRT system. It has positions, velocities, ages, IDs. So you can check the content of the file, and also the a uh, preview of the simulator uh, has a lot more options. So uh, first off, we have the so right here we can we have the coloring. So for example, with uh, by default the particles are covered by their speed, but we can also uh, use the age. So these particles they don't have uh, sizes or viscosity, but you can use that as well. So also the uh, Phoenix preview has the Swice preview right here, and uh, also uh, the. Uh, Phoenix Preview has the auto reduction. So in case you are loading some huge files with a lot of data in them, so I'm just going to return this back to speed. Uh, so uh, the preview can auto reduce and uh, accommodate for the for the large amount of data so that your viewport doesn't get stuck. So uh, it's much cooler this way. And also one more thing that uh, you couldn't you couldn't do before with the PRT reader is that now the uh, all of the time band controls under the input rollout also apply to PRT caches. So, for example, I can slow them down, or I can even yeah, I can even play them backwards. So, if I slow them down like to ten percent of the original speed, so here it is. So, here is the the PRT cache sequence, which is slowed down a lot. And um, so, also this means that uh, now you can plug these loaded PRTs again into a particle shader. So. I can pick the simulator like this. Okay, and here's the PRT system. So I can render these out as points or bubbles or uh, anything that uh, Phoenix supports. And uh, also I can plug these uh, textures into uh, these particles into the Phoenix particle texture. Um, so here it is. And uh, it can access their data. And uh, for example, here you can see that they have the position, velocities, ages, IDs. So uh, you can use a particle texture to uh, read out data from the PRT system and uh, use it, for example, to cover a particle shader by plugging it uh, into the uh, cover map right here, for example, like this. 
So uh, the particles can be covered by any of the uh, PRT properties. And you can use them with uh, all of the Phoenix nodes that uh, accept uh, PRTs. You can even uh, use them uh, with the source and, for example, create another simulator uh, into which uh, these loaded PRTs can be used as an emitter for more fluid. So uh, it's, uh, it, it, it's pretty universal. You can do a lot of things with it. And also, uh, now that we can load PRTs into the simulator, this means that for the first time we can load PRTs in Maya as well. So Maya didn't have any uh, form of PRT import uh, until now. So I can just pick the PRTs and here they are in, in Maya as well. And you can do the, all of those things in Maya also. Uh, ah, yeah, and uh, one more thing is that uh, since everything is working, the, that was uh, another thing that uh, we were missing before, that we couldn't flip the uh, Y and Z axis, so uh, you can do this as well. And also, uh, the Phoenix standalone preview, right here, uh, now that the simulator can load PRT files, you can also use the Phoenix standalone preview to, to load these. So again, it's uh, it's much more comfortable to use, and uh, there are a few things uh, new to the standalone preview as well that I wanted to show you. So uh, first off, is that uh, I added the standalone preview right here in the uh, in the window start menu, so uh, you can open it quickly. Otherwise, you have to browse to uh, C program files scales group. Phoenix FD, the version of your uh, Max or Maya installations, the standalone preview is the same. It doesn't matter if uh, if you install it with Max or Maya or uh, whichever version it is, but uh, uh, it needs to be installed separately. So here is the uh, the Phoenix preview. And uh, one more uh, new thing is that, for example, you can drag and drop uh, PRT or Aura or VDB files into the standalone preview like this, and it can open them. And one more thing is that you can associate your uh, Windows file with the standalone preview like this. So you can just double click PRTs and just uh, have them open in the, in the standalone preview. And this also applies to other uh, cache types. So for example, uh, I, uh, I can associate my Aura files with the standalone preview, like this. So here they are. And you can associate your VDBs or F3Ds with it as well. And uh, one thing that I want to add is to have this done automatically by the Phoenix installer so that you don't have to do it uh, manually. So uh, I hope this will be coming soon as well. And one last thing is that, of course, you can also use the Phoenix Cache Converter to convert uh, from PRT files to OR or VDB. So if you have PRT files coming from some software, either from Phoenix or from other software, you can convert it to uh, Phoenix OR caches, or you can convert it to VDB caches and load it in some other software which doesn't support uh, PRT import, but supports OR or VDB. So uh, this is all that I wanted to show you. Thank you for watching and until next time.